Hello, my dear creative, and welcome to lesson two of my perspective drawing series. Today, we will talk about drawing circles in perspective, how to draw ellipses. Again, all you'll need is a pencil and a piece of paper. In our previous lesson, day one, we understood the basics of one and two point perspective. So today, one more time, welcome to day two. We will talk about drawing circles in perspective, how to draw ellipses. I will also touch upon two major mistakes while drawing ellipses and will show you how to draw cylinders. I think the majority of us remember the geometry lessons at school and we remember that there is a diameter and a radius of the circle and what is circle? It's a round shaped figure that has no corners, no edges. We want to draw horizontal and vertical axes in order to better understand how our circle will work in perspective. While the circle is a two-dimensional object, the cylinder is a three-dimensional object also with a center point. Let's draw a vertical axis through this center point. And in the basis of the cylinder lies a circle shape. So cylinder consists of two parallel circles. And I did some hatching to indicate how this circle will look like in perspective and it would look like an ellipse. Let's go back to the concept of the horizon line. I've touched upon it in my previous lesson in day one. So we have our eye level, the horizon line, and if we locate our circle right on it, we will simply see this plane. Quick live demo, as I have this uh, paper circle, if I locate it right on the horizon line, it's flat, right? If I move it up, we can see uh, the opening of the ellipse. If I move it down, we also can see the opening. Now, as they say, back to the drawing board. I hope with this uh, quick demonstration, this concept of the circle in perspective uh, becomes a bit easier. So we see uh, if our circle is a bit above the horizon line, this it's ellipse. It opens more and more the further it away from the horizon line. So let's quickly show some more ellipses to demonstrate this concept. So we kind of see the bottom plane of this piece of paper, circular piece of paper that I showed you. So all this time our circle is parallel to the horizon line. So imagine that the horizon line is just a big huge plane. It's like a huge piece of paper that's horizontal and parallel to the earth. And our circle is also parallel to the horizon line, so it's not rotating, it's not inclined, it's just parallel. But because of its movement up or down, the further it away from the horizon line, the more we will see it. You can also think about a dinner plate or something like that. And you can take a dinner plate at home right now and do this experiment yourself. So First, you locate the dinner plate right on the level of your eyes, and then you move it up, and then you move it down. And now let's take a look at three different positions of our cylinder according to the horizon line. What if its upper circle, upper plane, is located right on the horizon line? And of course, the bottom circle is opening. So our cylinder will look like this. What if we deal with a more traditional situation? It's when our um, cylinder, uh, we can see openings of both circles. So it's slightly below the horizon line. We see that it's upper circle opening just a little bit because it's very close to the horizon line. And the bottom cir uh, circle is opening so much more because it's further away from the horizon line. 
I instantly want to add some hatching. What can you do? I have academic drawing background, <laughs> so let me add some hatching. All right, scenario number three. The upper circle of the cylinder is above the horizon line, and the bottom circle is below the horizon line. How this cylinder will look like? It will look like this, <laughs> and uh, I have homework for you. Let's draw a scenario number four. So you draw the cylinder above the horizon line. So the top plane and the bottom plane, the top circle and the bottom circle, the entire cylinder is hanging above the horizon line. So you tag me on Instagram at School of Sketching and put the hashtag Sorokina students so I can see your fourth scenario. Great, now it's time to talk about two common mistakes that beginners in interior sketching usually do when drawing ellipses. So mistake number one, I call it the fish. It's when you draw a circle, an ellipse, in perspective with those edges. So they look like very, very edgy, sharp, angular forms. No, 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 no. That's a mistake. We want to have a parabola here uh, in the edges. So parabola from one side and parabola from the other side. It's not a um, leaf, neither it's a fish, it should be a circle in perspective, it should be able to rotate, but with angled edges it, it's not possible for it to rotate. Okay, mistake number two is what I call a cucumber, <laughs> because in this uh, uh, instance we have kind of a flattened uh, ellipse, so it looks like it was flattened from the top and from the bottom. So how we want to draw an ellipse? The very easy way that I love to teach my students is to draw two axes, the vertical and the horizontal, and uh, to measure the equal distance to the left and to the right. And uh, if you want to be a pro in drawing uh, cir uh, circles in perspective in our vertical axis we want to give a little bit more space to the half which is closer to us. Why? Because of the perspective. Let me illustrate this principle by this classical example of the railroad. So we have these rails which are the equal distance from each other, right? So these dimensions, they are exactly the same. But what happens if we look at this railroad as a human being? Of course, we will see that it will recede in the distance and it will finally kind of meet in this vanishing point on the horizon line. Vanishing point. VP. <laughs> the same, exactly the same principle applies here. Of course, in al when drawing ellipses, it won't be as obvious as when we draw a railroad. So one more time, <laughs> horizontal and vertical axis. On horizontal axis, put it equal distance to the left and to the right from the vertical axis, they're equal. But uh, with the vertical axis, we want to measure slightly more to the half of this um, ellipse which is closer to us. So as you can see, I put two uh, parabolas in the edges, so it will be nice round shape. So let's imagine that here, this part, the bottom part is the closest to us. So this circle, uh, this ellipse is below the horizon line, which means that this half of the ellipse, which is below the horizontal axis, will be slightly bigger. When you get familiar with drawing circles this way, you can practice and practice more to draw it freehand way. And very soon with practice, it will become automatic. So practice, 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 practice makes progress. 
This ends our day two lesson two perspective series. Remember to do your homework and tag me on Instagram at School of Sketching and put a hashtag Sorokina students. Also, please share your insights from this lesson in the comments below. And I can't wait to see you in lesson three, where we will continue drawing cylinder, but this time in the room.